Hello and a big welcome to all students at Belvedere School. Um, I am Leanne Mee. I am the founder of a company called The STEM Workshop. So I run workshops that links uh, learning to science, technology, engineering and maths. And I work for a company called the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology. And as part of the work that I do with them, I have been asked to set you a challenge. So before I set the challenge, I'm just going to take you on a tour. OK, so shall we take a look around the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology? So the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology is an employer led training facility. That means that the centre has been funded by employers. So um, a list of local employers came together as shareholders to set up this training facility. So when the facility was set up, five million pounds was invested in this facility in Bridge North and the facility over in Shrewsbury. So the centre trains people and gives them the skills needed to carry out a range of roles within engineering and manufacturing. So the purpose of the centre is to train local employers. So if you wanted to train within this centre, you would need to apply for an apprenticeship role with one of our local employers. And there are a range of different roles in which you can explore. If you are successful at gaining that apprenticeship role, the centre will then carry out all of your formal training. So the training that you do at the centre will very much depend on the job that you um, apply for. So if you were to apply for a job in robotics, what you are trained on would be different if um, compared to if you applied for a job as a tool maker. So it very much depends on the job that you apply for. But all of your training will take place at the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology. And the training provider is Incom, and they are rated as outstanding by Ofsted. So as you can see on this quick virtual tour, it has swooped around all of the different spaces at the centre, including the workshop area, the classroom spaces. So you can have a quick look at what's available. Now, you can access this virtual tour yourself by going on to the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology website and clicking on the virtual tour. So take a look around. And those of you who are fortunate enough to win this competition, you will get a VIP tour later in the year. OK, so let's explore some industry sectors. At the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology, we work to support you in exploring different roles in different sectors across engineering and manufacturing. We're going to show you some of these engineering sectors and you've got to tell me what your challenge might be linked to. So one sector is automotive. So automotive sector, think about what sort of products would be designed in this sector. Then we've got aerospace, marine engineering, metrology, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering and electrical. What sector do you think we are going to be exploring? So obviously we do need to think about a challenge that um, allows you all to access the challenge and be able to produce ideas at home. Um, so the challenge that we are going to, um, the sector that we're going to link this challenge to is indeed civil engineering. So civil engineers, what type of products might a civil engineer design and manufacture. OK, so we looked at what civil engineers design and manufacture. We, we asked that question. Civil engineers design and manufacture any product that involves a structural application. So it could be a building, it could be a bridge, it could be our roads, it could be a dam. Civil engineers design structures that rely on the application of science and maths to ensure that those structures are solid and safe. So. We are going to take a look at some iconic structures from around the world. So here's a range of pictures of iconic structures. Can you name those structures? You should be able to spot them because these are famous structures, famous icon iconic landmarks. Now, which building from those images is based here in the UK? Can you spot it? Yes, on the right hand side at the bottom, 
that building there is called the Shard and that is in London. So hopefully you can name all of the other buildings as well. But what you need to think about is you need to gather inspiration from other iconic buildings to help you with this challenge. So here is your challenge. We would like you to develop an idea for a new famous landmark. OK, so let's talk you through what you would do in order to um, think about getting ready for this challenge. The first thing we'd suggest you do is actually look at and research famous landmarks. Research landmarks and explore and investigate ideas to help you gather ideas. Look for opportunities for a new landmark. Maybe there's an opportunity in your local area for a new famous landmark or a new building of some sort. Once you've researched different landmarks and opportunities there, then start to develop ideas. So to develop your ideas, you might use um, one or more of a range of communication techniques. So those ideas could be communicated by sketching, modeling. Um, you could be uh, exploring with the use of various materials and components, but be creative. Think creatively about your ideas. And once you've researched and once you've developed some ideas, then we need you to start thinking about how you're going to model them. Now, structures, there are three different types of structures. So let's just go through the different terms. So some structures are created from a sheet of material, and these are known as shell structures. So anything that's developed from a sheet is a shell structure. And if you look at the Sydney Opera House, actually, you'll find elements of the different types of structures within that build. But the main sort of focal point has been developed using the shell structure technique. So we've got shell structure and then we've got frame structures, which are made up of parts that are joined and that, you, that are hollow within. So the Eiffel Tower is a really iconic example of a frame structure and then we've got solid structures so structures that are made from solid brick or solid material so we've got an example there of the Taj Mahal so there's three examples so think about how you're going to develop it so I'm going to demonstrate to you how you develop a structure using these three techniques to help give you some ideas OK, so let's quickly look at the different materials and tools and equipment you may need in and around the home to design and make an, a, an iconic landmark. So you will need materials such as paper, card, corrugated card. Um, you would need a ruler and a pencil and something to cut, so some scissors. A craft knife would be preferable, but don't worry if you haven't got that to hand. But I'm just going to go through the different materials that you would use to create the different types of structure. So to make a frame structure, it needs to be a structure where I can actually um, place items through it. So that frame could be a lot smaller, but a frame structure is made up of parts and it's joined at the ends to create certain shapes. So this frame structure I've made, I've made a triangle. I'm now going to um, add three more um, kebab skewers and I'm going to join them just using elastic bands. So elastic bands are a great way of joining things. Uh, you could use glue if you have got glue at home, if you want to permanently fix it. But you can see with an elastic band, it allows me to explore different ideas. So here's my frame structure. Okay, that created. And because I've used elastic bands, I can then pull it apart and modify my idea if I want. So that is an example of the sort of materials you might use to make a frame structure. Now, the other types of structure that I mentioned were a shell structure. Now, a shell structure is made predominantly from sheet material. So that's a frame structure, put that to the side. And then shell structures are made from sheet material. So it's a sheet of material that is manipulated to create a three-dimensional sh um, shape. So I could use a shell structure on top of that frame structure. So it's a way in which I roll it, fold it, um, manipulate it to create a three-dimensional shape. So here's a piece of paper, and all I've done is measured a line here, I folded it, and that would give me, if I fold over the top, a frame structure. That structure could be um, could stand like that, or it could stand on its side, okay? But it is a way of creating um, structures out of sheet material or parts of structures. 
that is predominantly a shell structure, a frame structure, and then we mentioned solid. So a solid structure would be made from a solid material. So the sorts of solid materials you could use to prototype are clay, plasticine, and things like that. Now, if if you don't have these materials in and around the home, don't worry, but think about where you can source them. So you don't even have to create the shapes from scratch. You could actually source materials, recycled materials in and around the home to actually create a prototype from. So think creatively, come up with some really awesome ideas and see what you can produce. And I hope you have fun exploring and developing your ideas for your iconic landmark. Okay, so I've demonstrated to you how you could create um, a shell structure, a frame structure, and indeed I've explained how you might make something out of a solid material as part of a solid structure. So hopefully you've got some idea and some ideas to get you started. But what are the things we need you to consider when designing an iconic landmark? We need you to start thinking about what shape would it be? What would the form be? What materials will you use? And think about using shapes and materials that are really going to help your landmark stand out. Um, think about the, the purpose. Does the landmark have a purpose? What sort of scale are you going to build it at? What sort of size? Where might it be? What's the location? And will it have a function? So will your famous landmark, like the Shard, Will it have another function? So the shard is actually used as office space, but there's also a restaurant at the top of the shard as well. So that building has actually got a function and a purpose. So once you've started thinking about the different types of structures and you've started to think about all of these things, what we need you to think about next is how you're going to present your final idea to us. So think about how you're going to present your new famous landmark. Could it be a model? Could it be a sketch? Could it be a computer-aided design drawing? Well, yes, it can be any of those things. So here's some examples of how you might submit your ideas to us. We are happy. We understand that at the moment you might not have access to all the modeling materials. If you can do us a really good sketch that shows your famous landmark may be in context. Please do, you can submit a sketch. You could make a model using traditional modeling materials such as paper, card, tape, skewers. That's absolutely fine. Some of you, I would prefer to make a model than be able to um, create a sketch. I find it really hard to visualize my ideas as a sketch, I would have to make a model. Some of you might be quite savvy when it comes to computer-aided design software, and you might wanna create a CAD model. Again, that's fine. And there's lots of software out there that you can use that's free for you to download, such as Tinkercad, Fusion 360, Onshape, that's absolutely fine. And if you do make a CAD model, and you're pretty savvy about it, you could, email us at the Marches Centre and we can actually make that for you um, using our 3D printers. So it's entirely up to you how you present it. We are not going to judge, um, we're, we're judging the quality of the idea rather than how you've presented it. So we want to give you all of those options. So the challenge is set. We need you to get, get involved, get excited, share ideas with one another and you need to submit your ideas to your form tutor as a photo a photo or series of photos. And these need to be uploaded onto class charts. And like I said, the team at your school will whittle it down to a shortlist and that's where we'll get involved and we will decide who the overall winner is. Okay, the challenge is set. So we want all students to take part in this challenge and the overall winner will get a 25 pound Amazon voucher and a special VIP tour of the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology. We hope you enjoy this challenge and we look forward to seeing all of your designs very soon. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.